and it is Saturday the 17th of December 2016 I just came down now the traffic wasn't too bad now like when I say now I mean 10 minutes ago and now it's a uh, rocker chocker mini mocker blocker so yeah anti roll bars what do they do and how do you tune them <clears throat> well first of all the anti roll bars are like a secondary tuning device if you like for the suspension I mean uh, they are not of primary importance to the uh, performance of a car i.e. you can drive a car if it doesn't have anti roll bars i.e. they're not a primary thing with the suspension uh, for example springs dampers they are like a primary aspect of the suspension you cannot drive a car without springs or dampers so when you're thinking about upgrading your your anti-roll bars to stiffer items in a, in a perfect world you try and do it with uh, your springs first make sure your springs are in good condition if you've got soft springs and the car is all over the place and it's just basically unstable I you there's quite a big problem or there's something that you want to change quite majorly with the car with the suspension then you need to go after the primary stuff first ie springs for a road car I personally don't see any reason why you want to fit uprated dampers sport dampers to a car that you drive on the road first and foremost get upgraded springs and see where that takes you and if you're happy with that jobs are good and if you're generally happy with the stability that sports springs give you personally I'd recommend H&R every day of the week they work a little bit of magic I think H&R they give you the stability and the right comfort together I don't know how they do it but uh, you know we've been in this um, I've got a people tell me a lot of people tell me what springs they've got how they find them and I've never met a single person that said H&R doesn't give them stability or that it's a hard uh, spring which is more than I can say for other companies either bottoming out or the spring is too hard etc etc I've never met a dissatisfied person with H&R and then you've got your other big name manufacturers who have let me just say not so great a record so anyway this video is by anti roll bars so assuming that you've got a, a relatively good platform going you're gonna get the anti roll bar to just fine-tune it just to add a little bit more stability add a little bit more grip in the cornering without affecting the ride comfort so you can tune the anti roll bars uh, to give more understeer, less understeer, give them more oversteer, less oversteer. And basically, what you're doing with an anti roll bar and an adjustable anti roll bar is that you're controlling the the uh, weight transfer. So, if you've got a car that is understeering in steady state cornering, you would want to transmit more weight onto the front tires so they have more grip they have they dig into the tarmac more um, that's it you, you want to do you want to put more weight on the front axle and to do that you want to stiffen up your rear anti-roll bar so when you're going around the corner the stiffer anti-roll bar stops so much weight transferring onto the outside rear wheel and if it's stopping the weight doing that the weight is still got to go somewhere and that somewhere is going to be the outside front wheel and that wheel is going to get more weight more grip you could do it the other way if you've got understeer you could leave the rear anti-roll bar as it is and soften the front anti-roll bar basically you want to make it when you soften it you're making it easier for the weight to transfer onto the outside wheel and the more weight you put onto the outside wheel on the front on the axle on the axle which is transferring more weight you're gonna get more grip generally speaking there are limits to this like you can't have too stiff an anti-roll bar <coughs> like a two if the anti-roll bar is too stiff 
on a specific axle it can actually lift an inside wheel if the roll if the roll stiffness is too high but if you're doing that it's going back to what I was said before the primary things in the suspension are not right you know you're asking the anti-roll bar to do too much and at the end of the day, at the end of the day the anti-roll bar is always going to be limited by the primary stuff in the suspension i.e. the springs and the dampers the springs mainly so and that's it really that that is it anti-roll bars they give the car more grip the car will corner flatter it'll be more predictable less roll obviously it's an anti-roll bar and and it's very important to get an, an, an adjustable anti-roll bar in my opinion so you can have the car to suit your driving style um, tends to be that German manufacturers don't really give you that much adjustability in their anti-roll bars but we have a company called White Lion and we sell them because their anti-roll bars have the biggest amount of adjustment to our knowledge they usually have um, two or three on some, some cars even four points of adjustment and in addition to that they also have adjustable end links which you can further adjust the effect of the anti-roll bar so in summary anti-roll bar tuning is a secondary suspension tuning the device it can, you can, it can help you adjust the uh, balance of your car i.e. between understeer and oversteer if your car is understeering you can either increase the roll stiffness on the rear anti-roll bar and, and or soften it at the front and if you're getting oversteer you can uh, soften the anti-roll bar at the rear or uh, stiffen the anti-roll bar at the front and basically that is it that is it that is um, anti-roll bar tuning in a nutshell hopefully you found it informative please vote on the video subscribe to the channel all the usual stuff and i'll see you again next time thanks again